Okay, all right, so why don't we get started. Um, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to today's session. Um, I'm Adam Barrison from MS Dynamics World, and thanks for joining us today. Um, the session today will focus on how to replace Management Reporter and FRX with modern Excel reporting, um, and will be presented by Nils Rasmussen, who's the CEO of Solver, um, and we are very happy to have uh, Nils here with us today. Uh, so before um, I turn it over to Nils, I'd like to quickly mention that you can submit any questions you have during the session through the Q&A box on the right side of your screen, um, and Nils will try to get to all of them at the end of the event. So without further delay, I'm going to turn it over to Nils. All right. Thank you very much. So my name is Nils Rasmussen, and hopefully the next uh, 50 minutes or so before we go to Q&A, I can give you a good idea of um, an option to both Management Reporter and FRX, and hopefully I can show you how you can take both reporting and analysis to the next level. So let's uh, get started with that. What I'm going to do is um, briefly talk about uh, Solver, who we are, just so um, if you haven't heard about this before, you have a little bit of an idea of where we're coming from there. And uh, then, of course, we'll take a look at BI360, which is our product, and talk about how that compares to an FRX or a management reporter type uh, reporting technology and how it differentiates. And then we'll spend most of our time in a demonstration. And um, then we'll summarize up with the Q&A after that. So a little bit about us. Solver has been around as a Microsoft partner for 20 and a half years. So many of you might have seen us at uh, the different uh, Microsoft conferences like Convergence and the um, Dynamics Communities conferences and so on. And we work across the world with our BI360 solution. And we work very much through the partner channel. So uh, a good number of the Dynamics resellers out there are also BI360 partners. Uh, the product that I will be showing you is our BI360 product, and uh, Solver has been on the Gartner Group Magic Quadrant, uh, for those you'd ever heard about that, for the last three years with that product in good company with uh, solutions like Hyperion from Oracle and, and some other well-known brand names out there in the reporting and budgeting space. So um, what does BI360 do, and how does it compare to what you're used to from Management Reporter, and if you're still on FRX, uh, how it compares to that. So the main thing is that we uh, are of the belief, I think it's pretty much proven now, that uh, the finance and accounting team in pretty much any organization, in pretty much any country around the world, uh, use Excel a lot. Uh, in many ways, Excel is their favorite tool for reporting, um, but of course, Excel has some holes in it, like there is no real good security there. It isn't really born as a financial report writer. It's just a spreadsheet. It just happens to be that finance folks turns Excel into a financial report writer in many cases, and sometimes they turn it into a data warehouse by combining all, all their data sources into a spreadsheet, and in many cases they turn Excel into a budgeting tool. So with that notion, when we built BI360, we made Excel the place where you design the reports and the budget forms. Uh, Adam, I'm seeing in note here that there's some folks, or at least one, that can't hear me. Can you still hear me? Hmm. Yeah, this, so it's, just, uh, it seems like it's just it's just one person, but if they want to okay. log out of the event and log back in, that should do the trick. Okay, just checking. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, so Excel is, is at the center of our universe when it comes to the power user. That's going to create financial statements and, and all the things I'll talk about today that the finance team typically likes. But Excel is not a fantastic tool when it comes to delivering reports to your users uh, because Excel is not really an Internet-based tool and uh, it's lacking, um, you know, good multi-user functionality. It's not really a great report archive, for example. So with BI360, 
we made Excel the design interface, and then we have a modern web portal where users can log in and uh, run their own reports at any time they want. So we will show you both and how those come together. I like to call that the best of both worlds, Excel for design, web for delivery. Um, so with BI360, it doesn't only give you an alternative to FRX or management reporter for your general ledger-based financial statements. It also can report on sub-ledger data, so from, from your Dynamics ERP. You can also pull in data from other ERPs if you're making acquisitions or you deal with several ERPs or you have the plan to move, let's say, to Dynamics 365 or something else later, BI 360 can follow you. Um, and of course, the fact that it combines GL and sub-led reporting into one tool, it means less things to learn for you. When it comes to budgeting, it also has the budget module, so you don't need to get yet another piece of software if you want to have a modern budgeting technology. And it also provides modern analysis through dashboards or through integrations with tools like Power BI. So the bottom line is that uh, you don't need to go to your IT department uh, to ask for help to design reports. It's not a technical solution. Uh, the finance team can manage reporting, budgeting, and analysis on their own. In other words, with all of the data that you're interested in, not just your financial statements like you have in FRX and Management Reporter, uh, you can combine that data in through BI360, as you'll see in a little bit, so you have complete insight across the important data in one report writer. And you can automate, therefore, many processes that typically are, for example, Management Reporter exported to Excel, tweak formatting, um, budgeting, existing in spreadsheets, and so on. So we're bringing that all together, and the end result of that is that on the left side, before a tool like BI360, which is really defined as a corporate performance management tool because of its multifaceted functionality. Uh, so before, um, one of the statistics we found out there is that uh, about 45% of uh, uh, you know, financial executive's time is spent on uh, you know, a lot of manual administrative tasks. And with a tool like BI360, uh, you can shave off a good 15% at least of those manual tasks, especially in, of course, the area of reporting budgeting, and have more time for analysis and decision making. That, of course, is the, the um, golden nugget to always drive towards. So my last slide before we go in and look at uh, the product. So a clear difference to an FRX or management reporter, as I mentioned, is that we use an Excel interface to design the report. So all of the layout, all of the calculations of Excel are at your disposal when you build reports. Um, I also mentioned that we can combine multiple data sources. So here you can see that very clearly. Um, so whichever Dynamics ERP you're on today, or if you have plans to go to Dynamics 365, operations or finance, as they're called, we have connectors for that. So we can report on those. You can do live reporting. This is very important. Just like a management reporter or FRX, you can do live reporting on all of the on-premises Dynamics ERP, so AX, GP, SL, and NAV. That's this dotted line. So we're connected directly into those databases. Uh, if you install BI360 uh, in the same network or where the system have access to your Dynamics ERP database. So that gives you live reporting on general ledger and sub-ledger data in the report writer. The dashboard module, which is not really the focus of today's presentation, uses the same integration, and you can have live uh, dashboards on Dynamics. Uh, if you want to get to elevate your BI, your business intelligence game a little bit, of course, then with the BI360 data warehouse, we can not only deal with advanced consolidations, if you have a lot of companies that you need to consolidate, but we can also bring in data from other data sources, whether that's CRM systems or point-of-sale systems or uh, in-house data marts or, or other systems. Uh, Bring that together in the data warehouse, and now again, you have only one single report writer here in BI360 that can go across all of that data. So no longer just all of your Dynamics database, but also other data sources. So that's taking it 
to you know the nth degree in terms of getting the benefits out of this exact same license. Um, and as we talked about, EA360 also has a budgeting module that's fitting right in here, and that's how it all comes together. So what we're going to do is put that behind us, and we're going to first spend, let's say, 10 minutes here in the web portal so you can see how it should look like with a, a modern web portal as a place where your users can go and run their own reports. And then we will leave the web portal and we will come down into Excel, where this is actually where I'm going to design the reports that I'm going to show you here in the web portal. So I'm going to then build the report, and that becomes then the clearest comparison for you compared to, let's say, an FRX management reporter on uh, how dynamic uh, is the report writer, how hard is it to use, and so on. So you'll see it there. But let, let's first take a look at what this web interface represents. So. Uh, unless you're only one or two users internally in your organization today of, uh, I should say, users and consumers of reports, um, a web portal tends to be a very, very good thing because now you can be anywhere, any place to run your reports because it goes through the Internet and you just need a web browser. You don't have to have anything installed on your computer if you're an end user and you can come through the web portal. The other thing you can see here in BI360 is that, um, keep in mind, we have three front-end modules, dashboards, the reporting, and budgeting. So if you like all of them, or eventually you want to grow into using all of them, now you've got a single interface for all of that. These are actually dashboards you're looking at. But just one click away, that's actually a formatted profit and loss report. That's a balance sheet. That's a cash flow statement. That's a sales report. Like I mentioned, BI 260 also can be used to report on sub-ledger data. That's an accounts receivable report. That's an accounts payable report. Even HR payroll or anything else, inventory reports and so on. As long as you have the data, you can use BI 260 against that. Even data coming from other data sources, if you use the BI 260 data warehouse, as you saw earlier, you can bring that data in, whether that's Google Analytics data or something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to open one of each of uh, three examples here. I'm going to actually start with the dashboard, not because dashboarding is a topic of the presentation, but because when it's sitting right next to your financial statements, you'll realize that it becomes a very natural thing for your users to hop back and forth between graphical analysis in the dashboard and more formatted viewing and analysis in the structured financial statement. To me, dashboards and report writers really should be one and the same. Uh, both have very important uh, functions in the analysis process. So here's the dashboard in BI 360. Um, if you're going the route of Power BI, we also have a white paper that describes how you can connect Power BI to BI 360. But here's a native dashboard. I got four companies in this demo model, so if I click on, uh, let's say, um, the corporate Asia here that have the highest revenue for this period, it actually drilled down to the underlying revenue accounts, four revenue accounts, and automatically ranks them. And we can see product revenue inside of my Asia subsidiary is um, the highest uh, revenue account, if you will. And you can also see the dashboard brings together top 10 receivables, top 10 payables, and so on. So a nice dashboard for a higher level executive to get a view of the most important data. It's just an example. You can design your own dashboards just like you can design your own reports. So we're doing some high level analysis, but let's say we're looking at the revenues and expenses, and we really want to see this in a more structured way. Um, where a profit and loss report would be the great way to go deeper on that. Or, of course, you can go into a sales dashboard to go deeper down to product level, for example. But let's go directly from this dashboard over to report. Notice at the bottom of my screen, I can navigate. We call these favorites. So for each of your users, if you have hundreds of reports, they can click on their favorites, and that then sets them up at the bottom of the screen. So that is very fast to hop back and forth. There's no different login to go from a dashboard to report. So I'm going to swoop over to a profit and loss report. And now we're actually looking at the report that was built 
with our report writer. This is not a dashboard. It's a financial statement built in Excel with the BI360 report writer, but run here in the web portal. And as you can see, you can have um, full, complete formatting. You don't lose any formatting because you're running it through the web. Even though the web actually isn't Excel anymore, it dynamically converts what was in Excel. So uh, if you had charts in that report, they will also show up here, and borders and fonts and, and those type of things. Now, you saw it brought up a report immediately. That's because the very last time I ran it, which was right before this presentation, was 16 minutes ago, uh, I ran it for the US demo company here for September 2015. You can see it over on the left. Uh, but you can see that uh, on Friday, so last week, it was run f um, for the Canadian company I can see here. So if I want to look at that, I click there, and immediately it comes up. You see that? So anything that you've run recently, you can just pick up here instantly. Or if you're running different months or companies and you want to compare them, you don't need to sit and rerun them or print them to paper. Now, if you come in here and we say we want to run this for a different entity, based on my security, I will then see the different companies or departments or whatever I'm filtering on here. Uh, I will see only those items on the list I have access to. So if we switch and run it for our EMEA subsidiary, we say run. Now I'm actually running that report live. This is not a static uh, portal like a SharePoint where you might have a list of posted uh, reports that were executed, let's say, in management report and posted to SharePoint. Uh, it's a dynamic portal. These reports could be live on Microsoft Dynamics if you built them that way, or they can be run, running off the BI 260 data warehouse. In this case, you can see on the, over on the left, it ran on the data warehouse. If you want to consolidate, we have hierarchies and trees, um, and you could then expose and show this as a tree if you had the significant consolidation. But you can also do like a multi-select on the fly, like, like you see here, and then consolidate right off uh, the list there by selecting one or two or three companies. Um, and we can talk about more about uh, consolidation afterwards when I'm building a report in Excel so that you can see that, OK? And there uh, we have the consolidated report. Now, once you have a report and you want to know something behind a number, you can right click and then drill down, OK? So if I was live on Dynamics, I was then drilling onto the, your Dynamics database and seeing the transactions. If I'm running on the warehouse, I'm drilling there. So it totally depends where you built the report. A couple other things when we see the report here. Maybe you want this report to um, Excel, for example, because you want to print it locally or you want to do some ad hoc analysis. So I can take it out of the web portal using the Share button here. Uh, I could also email it to someone. They would not need a license. It will shoot out of the web portal as an Excel file. But I'm going to download it. When I say download, I'm going to put it right there on my desktop and give that the name. So that means if you decide to put the whole bunch of your users onto um, the web portal, and that's the only access uh, they have to the system, they still have the power to get reports down locally, on demand whenever they want to, as you can see right here. And the report preserves all of the formatting you saw, so you don't lose any formatting. The reason it's so good at preserving the formatting is it was originally born in Excel. That's where the original report template came from that you built. So it's very good at returning back to that format. As a matter of fact, um, since pretty much every customer of management reporter and FRX that I've ever met tends to export those reports out to Excel quite frequently for presentation, formatting, to add something. Um, one thing that um, most people don't like there is that you lose the original formula. So it becomes a static spreadsheet with no formulas. Versus if you look here, if I click, let's say, on the variance column, you can see that it has preserved the original formulas that somebody built when they created this template before it went up to the portal. So now it comes back and remembers those formulas. Um, if I exported this because I want to do some pre-month closing analysis, uh, something I do quite a bit here at Solver too, 
uh, we are a Dynamics customer ourselves, uh, then that analysis instantly is reflected on all of the calculations that are in that spreadsheet. And what I'm doing is completely harmless because it's an exported report. It does not change anything in the database and so on. It's just an export report, but I don't need to rebuild any formulas. It's the same thing if I come up here to Excel and let's say we go to print, it remembers, you know, fit to page and so on. That was set up in the original Excel template that somebody designed. So um, it's not hard to go from the web portal and uh, come down into your local Excel. Now let's continue our journey just for a couple of minutes before we go into report writing. Going down to the bottom of our screen again, remember we started with doing some graphical analysis in the dashboard. Then we clicked right over on this P&L report. And then let's say I'm looking at this P&L report and I'm focusing on some of the expenses here. And I need to get down to the vendor level and see basically a nice formatted structured accounts payable report. How can I get to that without logging out of this portal, logging into Dynamics, and then let's say running an SSRS report or if you're on GP, a smart list, or basically completely switching uh, interfaces and logins and so on. How can I do all of that directly here from the same web portal from whatever location I'm in? Well, I just scoot right over at the bottom over to, let's say, my accounts payable report. And that's sitting right there. And of course, you can format and build this with any type of layout you want. This is just an example. But you can see that I'm now down at the accounts payable transaction report. So the whole idea of what I'm showing you, going from a dashboard to a financial statement to a detailed sub-ledger transaction report, is one single report writer for all of it, not three report writers with three logins and three interfaces and three training classes and three upgrade cycles and all of that. It's a huge difference. And of course, I'm doing this in my browser. And then finally, if I had a report in here like this um, that is based on some completely different data than what you have in Dynamics, put that in the data warehouse, and that can be part of what you're looking at in this same interface too. Okay? So with that said, you get a little bit of an idea of how it is to be an end user. Uh, once you've set up BI360, okay? So I'm going to touch on one other item while I'm in here. Actually, two, because I'm going to show you quickly a consolidation example. So if I come down here, I have some examples of that. By the way, these folders that you see on the left side of the screen are examples of folders that you can set up yourself as an administrator, and they're really ways to organize your reports or even budgets and forecasts into uh, natural groupings, natural folders, so that it's easy for users to find. I, I like to think of them as organizing it by process. So if I have a consolidation process, I might have all of the different consolidation reports in there, uh, consolidating trial balances, consolidating P&Ls, um, balance sheets, cash flows, and so on. Since we've already looked at the P&L, maybe we'll open a cash flow statement here, and then we can run that. Just like I mentioned earlier, uh, you have parameters. In this case, you know, I set this up to always list my companies across with the consolidated total, and I can choose the month and the year up there on the top. So now we ran a consolidated cash flow statement. We have my four, our four companies and the total. If you have eliminations uh, and you do consolidations, we can handle both um, elimination companies coming from Dynamics. They're simply just other companies, and you would put the elimination company as a column here. Or we can also do automatic eliminations and intercompany reconciliation within BI 360. Okay? So that was just very, very quick on also doing consolidations in here. I'm going to spend 60 seconds on a topic that wasn't really listed in the webinar, but on budgeting and forecasting. Uh, the only thing I want to tell you is that it's a module in BI 360, uh, so you can get rid of, let's say, a manual budget process in Excel, uh, or 
if you're using an older budgeting tool like, um, uh, let's say, Forecaster from Microsoft, um, you can upgrade it into BI360. And again, you have now the same interface for budgeting and forecasting as you have for your reporting and analysis. So uh, the very cool thing with BI360 is that the report writer is also the same as the form designer. So once you learn our Excel add-in to build financial statements and other reports, you are 95% there in terms of knowing how to create a budget or forecast model because it's the same tool. It's just some extra features that you use when you build a form because the form can store data. So anything you see in yellow here can be saved into the database simply by saying store data. So forms could be used for things like um, forecasts and budgets. We even have customers that are using forms to collect other statistical data and things that aren't naturally coming from Dynamics, but maybe that were just sitting in Excel. So you can collect any type of data. Um, for the most part, people use the forms for budgeting and forecasting. So that was my mini, mini quick demo of an input form. So you know you can also do that there. With that said, how do we design reports? Well, we do that with the Excel add-in. So we're gonna switch hats right now and leave this end user interface. And we're gonna come down to Excel. So what do we have here? We have standard Excel, as we can see. And then we have the BI360 Excel add-in up here on the left. Of course, I can permanently show these Excel menus, as you see. So we can go here and say new and start with a new spreadsheet. So let's say we're going to build a brand new report as compared to copying a report or even as compared to taking an export from FRX or management reporter, which you could run to Excel and then turning that into a BI360 report by adding BI360 formulas to it. That, that could be an option. Uh, when you're transitioning from FRX to management reporter. But in this case, we're gonna build something from scratch. So we're gonna come up here in the BI360 menu inside of Excel and say new. That means you're gonna get the brand new report. Here you can see, um, it's actually my demonstration laptop you're looking at, but you can see a number of the integrations that actually exist in BI360. We have others too, like uh, uh, Intact Dynamics 365, um, Acromatica, NetSuite. So we have about 11 different ERP integrations out of the box. Plus the data warehouse, you can put any data you want from anywhere. So right now, I'm, I could do, let's say, a live report on GP, NAV, SL, AX, or I can connect to the warehouse. I'm gonna connect to the warehouse because I also wanna show you um, using trees, like hierarchies, for those of you that have you know, many companies to roll up, and, and the data warehouse, has that as one of its very nice functions too. So here we are, empty spreadsheet, we got nothing. Next two minutes, three minutes, I will show you how you can build a complete report in here. We'll do something pretty simple today. You already saw some fancy cash flow statements and P&Ls with charts and so on. So for the sake of time, we'll create a pretty simple report. So on the left side of the screen, um, you see the database you're connected to through the eyes of BI360. So if this was uh, Dynamics, GP, SL, AX, NAV live, you would see their modules. And you would see inside of the modules, you would see the different fields, and you see everything in friendly names. Fields meaning dimensions, attributes, amount fields. And with the friendly names that we add when we set up ERP integration, so this is out of the box, of course. It's nothing you have to build. Uh, it becomes a lot easier, especially when you're starting to report on, let's say, payables or asset data or payroll data or project data, whatever data you have, uh, where today you might rely on uh, third-party consultants or you rely on your IT department to create complex sub-ledger reports. Here, because you have the friendly names, there's no SQL tables you have to relate to. This is sort of an layer between you and the SQL database. That makes life easy for a finance person. So if we create a quick report here, first thing you can see is 
formatting is just Excel, meaning all of your existing Excel skills immediately come to play. So when we do a training class, which usually we like to do for two days um, for BI360, it's typically no training on Excel features because everyone knows these very basic things in Excel. In other words, you already have halfway there by the fact that you've used Excel before. So a little bit of formatting like this. And now we want to turn this into data to report that's actually pulling data, either directly from Dynamics or from the BI260 data warehouse. So we're going to come over on the left since we're pulling general ledger data here. We have picked that module. We're going to go and get the account number. So we're going to drag and drop that into Excel. So you just drag it over, and it will attach itself to row 7 in Excel. And it's asking, do you want these down the rows? It even puts a little box around that because it's pretty sure that you want your accounts down the rows as compared to across the columns. Yes, you can completely flip your reports. I know some people have revenues, expenses, and you know, sort of groupings sometimes across columns and then maybe periods or departments down the road. Totally okay. The report drive is super flexible with uh, any dimension going in any direction in rows and columns. So that's a difference from a management report or FRX right there. Um, I'm going to mention about 10 differences as we go through it here. So Excel layout and calculations, huge one. Drag and drop of all the formulas, big one. Subledger and GL data and other data sources, that's a big one. Um, using dynamic rows and columns, you're going to see in a second, it's, it's a very big one. So let's come in and get an attribute so we can get the account description, and we're going to drag that in. And while we're here, let's get our amount field. And let's drag that in like this. Um, let's then say, what, which account numbers do we want? So we can come down here to our little filter window. And notice it's attached itself to row 7 in Excel. You may have seen other Excel add-ins as report writers, but you probably have never seen an Excel add-in that can control rows and columns in Excel. That was a smart thing in management report in FRX, that you don't have to put, let's say, an account number repetitively across all of the cells or reference it up to a place where it's located and put that in every cell. The fact that you can use row and column tables actually made the reports faster to build. Here, it takes that same concept to Excel, but it adds a whole bunch of other features, as you will see, to make it much more dynamic and easier than, than creating a report um, in a management report or FRX. So you see, we're going to look up here. We see our list of natural accounts. I'm going to create, in this case, a trial balance. So it's going to be very easy because I'm, creating, I'm selecting the entire range of accounts. Because I have this little button here, I call that magic button number one in BI360. Uh, when I click that button, that's called expanding, I will not, like in MR, um, get a summary of these accounts on one row. It will actually expand out and list each account on a separate row. So you use that a lot in the different sections of your financial statement because that also means that if you create a new account in Dynamics, and it's inside the range, which it typically would be, then your report updates itself. It inserts the new account automatically. That's a huge f factor because that reduces the chances that you ever will have wrong financial statements because you're missing a new account. Okay, So think about that for a second. That feature is yet another difference to management reporter, where your life gets easier and your reports tend to have less issues in them and things change in dynamics. Now, what about our columns? We have all of these pre-built functions. You can even make your own if you can ever come up with something you haven't covered here. <clears throat> um, so if I want year to date, I'm going to take that and drag it in. So I can literally drag in my period formula. And in this case, they will attach themselves to the columns, just like the accounts attach themselves to the rows there. And I want to add the variance column. How do I calculate variance? <clears throat> Simply using my Excel skills. So embedded in your reports that you build in BI360, you can have incredibly advanced formulas if you need, you know, triple nested if statements to, you know, 
provide some interesting automatic comment, you know, where you say if the variance is more than 10%, put a text comment in my report that says, you know, this was great, you really exceeded revenue, or you want to use a net present value formula, or whatever you can come up with. If it's an Excel formula, you can use it. That's another difference uh, for Excel Management Reporter. You have an enormous library of uh, functionality for your calculations thanks to Microsoft and what they've done with Excel, and that's natively right in front of you there. Let's add a total here. Same thing as earlier, all Excel formatting is available so that you can make this look really nice really fast. Let's add a little numerical formatting, again using Excel here. <clears throat> and I think we're ready to go. So let's see what this report looks like. Let's go to the Run tab, and notice it already created a prompt for me automatically for a period, since it saw that I was dragging in those year-to-date formulas. And let's run this for period 3, 2012. And there's our first report. So that's a 78-row report built by a really one-row report definition, or two if you count the total here. In the for Excel Management Reporter, that would have been 78 rows that you are meticulously coding row by row by row in the row table. It's a huge difference right there, that one little function on the rows. Like we said earlier, it's not just saving you time when you build the report in different sections of a financial statement where you can list different ranges, but it also, more importantly, helps reduce the chances that you will ever miss a new count because it will automatically pop up. Um, let's do one more thing. Let's do another filter, and then we'll wrap up this design exercise. Let's say that you have many departments or maybe you have many companies and you want to roll those up so you get the consolidated, consolidated report here. So I'm going to put that there. Now we need to add a filter. Again, that could be company, division, department, whatever your dimensions or segments are in your Dynamics accounts string or setup. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to drag in my company dimension. I could have dragged in department, like I said. I'm going to drag in the company dimension. And because I selected this blue button you saw, it's not a global filter. It's not specific to a row or column, but it's for the whole report. If you don't like that name entity, maybe you want to call it company. So this is just a prompt that the user will see. So this little wizard basically asks you what type of drop-down box do you want to see when the user picks company, you want a checkbox or whatever. Well, I want a tree. Because I'm running this, per this specific report off of the BI360 data warehouse, which is a great way, by a great place, by the way, to do consolidations uh, and so on too. Um, because I'm running it off the warehouse, I have um, a very nice tree builder where I can make hierarchy. So I just want to show you, instead of getting a list of companies, like you saw in my example on the, on the, in the web portal, I'm going to choose a tree. And I want to show you another feature. This is, um, this is magic button number two, as I like to call it, here in the designer in BI360 create sheet per value. It, does, it saves you hours and hours of work in some instances. You'll see that in a second. So when I click that button, it's going to automatically reproduce these reports across the different tabs in Excel for each company. You'll see what I mean in a second. Let's first finish this uh, report layout. We do want to see which company we're running it for in the header. So we're going to drag in that parameter or filter that we just created and put it right there in the header. Then we're going to come back to the Run button. Now we see we have two filters. We have the period, like we saw the first round when we created this. But we can also see the company dimension. And you actually see it as hierarchies, because I chose that option. So if you expand any of these, these are examples of having multiple different roll-ups. Maybe one is by geography, one is by you know, uh, legal ownership, uh, one can be a functional roll-up, one can be pre and post acquisition. There can be many reasons that you might want different roll-ups of the same data. Um, so this report you can run on the fly for any, any roll-up. Uh, let's run it first for just one 
entity at the lowest level there, so my US Corp. And we can see that looks good, shows in the header, shows on the label on the tab. Um, one thing I forgot to show you earlier, can you drill down like you did in the web portal while you're building and testing the report in here in Excel? Absolutely. Right click, drill down. You can even do that drill down, right click, drill down to a pivot table if you want to actually see this into a pivot table. Okay? So that's totally up to you. But let's go up our hierarchy. Let's just do a roll up to the division level where it's going to summarize multiple of these um, subsidiaries. Notice what happens now. This was magic button number two that I clicked on earlier inside that wizard where it said create sheet per value. What that did is when I run the report at the consolidated level, I don't only get the consolidated report, but I get what most customers using FRX or management reporter really loves, which is when you run the famous reporting tree in um, those tools and you export it to Excel, you get these tabs where you have the consolidated level and then you have the detailed, um, the same report run for the different subsidiaries showing below. Or that can be the company total and this can be your departments. And that comes automatically. So if I run this at the top of my tree, right there, like the parent level, I'm going to get about 10 versions of this report lined up exactly following how you set up the tree in that order. You can see that coming through right there. Okay. So that's just a feature. Now, once you've built a report and you say, now I'm ready to make this available to all of my end users that you might have made users of the BI360 web portal. Again, reminder, this was the web portal that you were looking at earlier, right? So how do you get that up there? Well, you come here and you say, publish to web portal from the menu here and then that report goes up there, okay? So the last thing that I'm going to do before uh, we start summarizing up here is I'm going to show you a couple of special reports or cool reports. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to open this report. Because how far can you go in terms of being creative when you have a very dynamic, very powerful, Excel environment, Excel add-in to design both your financial statements and your sub-ledger reports and the reports based on data from other systems, again, combining it in the warehouse, how far can you go? So this is just an example of uh, what you could do. We call this decision pack. It's not a product. It's just a concept of creating one workbook, if you will, that has all of the types of reports that a management team may need to see at, for example, month end, without them even having to go and run report number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's say. Uh, you can just package it together with BI360, um, put a different report on each tab as you design it. I showed earlier how you design it. And then, of course, they can run it through the web portal if they want to do that, and everything comes out like this. Or a lot of cases, people want to use uh, automatic scheduling and distribution of reports. That's a feature in BI360 called the Report Publisher, and that means your end users don't even need the license of BI360 because reports like this can be run 5 a.m. in the morning automatically and sent out by email, and they're just now Excel attachments to the email. We use that a lot internally at Solver. Different teams, like the sales team and consulting team and so on, during the week automatically get different production reports uh, specifically run and email to them so they don't have to log into the system. I personally like both. Some reports, just routine reports getting auto-emailed. Other times I want to go into the web portal, be a user, and do on-demand analysis. Let's take a quick glimpse of what you see here. This isn't really a report, is it? What you see right here we call an auto-narrative. So uh, in, 
with BI 360 and the Excel add-in, you can build automatic narrative reports that actually produces what I would call a financial newspaper <laughs> or a cover page. You can also use this for automatic footnotes at the bottom of your financial statements. So it's essentially um, creating adjectives automatically based on business rules, like the word great is not me writing it into the report template. It was the whole paragraph was generated automatically. It got the 88,000 net income from the financial statement that's on one of the other tabs is inserted automatically. So you build this once and forever after, you have an automatic financial newspaper every month, uh, which can be different for every department, that runs, let's say, as a cover page for this report package. Uh, you could have other reports that still don't look like an FRX or management report report, but in BI360 it's the same report writer, that are built with the power of Excel and using the charts that Excel provides. You see an example of that here where I'm really making um, a report into a KPI dashboard, if you want to call it that. But it's quote unquote only a BI360 report. It's not really a dashboard, it's using the power of Excel. And it's dynamic, of course. Whenever you run the report, the data changes and the chart changes. You can have more kind of boring, quote unquote, boring reports in here like this. This is a, a P&L report, and it's a, actually it's a KPI report. Sorry, it has uh, you know financial um, items from the P&L, but down here it's got cash and receivables and. Uh, some ratios and so on, and it's a 13-month rolling report, if you can see that. It goes from September to September the prior year. You could have um, nice reports like this, highly formatted financial statements. You saw this when I ran reports on the web portal earlier, when I was showing you the accounts payable report that you can expand and collapse rows and columns. That's a nice feature um, that uh, makes reports easy to analyze. Cash flow, balance sheet maybe a detailed analysis of the revenues. Again, this is just a report where I'm being creative, um, making some charts on the revenue accounts. Same thing for my operating expenses and the key items. Um, but then, in order to go deep down, when I've looked at, let's say, my um, revenues, I want to look at sales data by salesperson and so on. Well, if that, that data is in dynamics, you can build the report in BI 360. If it's not in Dynamics, some other system, bring it into our data warehouse, and you can still build the report in BI 360 and make it part of a report package like you see here. Payables, so now I'm looking, doing detailed analysis by vendor, and then I can go right back to my P&L like this, and I can come right back to the payables report and the receivables report and so on. So the idea here is, all of the reports, whether graphical, formatted financial statements, or sub-led reports, not only sitting in the web portal where you can run each component on their own, but also automatically being able to be combined into one single workbook and even emailed out to the users. So with that said, hopefully, um, we're going to go to Q&A here, but hopefully I've given you some ideas of what life can look like after FRX or management reporter. So if you decide that those tools uh, are not necessarily what's going to take you into the future, that it's time to move on, then with BI360, you don't only get the new financial general ledger based report writer, but you could get so many more opportunities as you saw there uh, with the type of reports you create, the type of data you include. Uh, and then, of course, you can grow the report writer into also including the budgeting and forecasting module. Why should that be a different software, different interface, different security? Why not in the same tool? And you can also use the dashboards unless you have a different dashboard tool. So with that said, uh, we're going to go over to Q&A. And I'm going to leave this screen open, and then we're going to start seeing if there are any questions that you might have, and I will be happy to answer them while we're on this call. Great. Thanks, Nils. It looks like we do actually have a bunch of questions that came in and are coming in now, too. Um, so the first question we have is, are there any restrictions or issues faced when upgrading from one version of GP to another? Um, not that I'm aware of. So in terms of going back in time, for example, um, we go way, way back. I forget where GP, 
um, 5.0 or something, very, very far back. As far as upgrading, so you're on a fairly recent version of GP, and now you're going to the next version. GP has been extremely stable, um, like most older accounting systems uh, for many, many years. It's very rare that Microsoft are actually changing the name of the general ledger table or something. So um, typically the, what would change from one, not just GP, but one ERP version to another is that uh, there may be some new tables that we include in the integration uh, and you have more opportunity to report on what's new. But it's it's been very, very rare that something messes up your reports because you have a new version. Great, thank you. Um, so another question, I understand the budget files set on top of the SQL data such as Dynamics SL, can the Excel model be used directly, or I'm sorry, be used to directly update the SQL tables? That is a great question and I'm glad it was asked because I completely forgot to even talk about it. Um, two years ago, so we've been on the market for seven and a half years with BI 260. So it's uh, in technology terms, I would say relatively young um, product. It's not brand new, but it's uh, not an old technology. And two years ago, we had started getting requests from smaller customers that didn't want, you know, they didn't have complex budget processes with, you know, payroll, capex, uh, detailed price, quantity, revenue budgets and so on. They really just wanted to get rid of the manual kind of Excel export import process they had with uh, GP or their other ERP and budget at the general ledger account level by department, for example, with line item detail. In other words, being able to dip below the account level. So two years ago, we um, um, added to our integration to Dynamics, GP, SL, and NAV, so those three systems that we did this for, that you can, uh, instead of using our data warehouse as your enterprise budget database among all the things they can do, uh, you can actually uh, budget and it writes that budget data straight into the GL budget table in Dynamics including a table we've added for to store comments and line item detail. Line item would be like specifying all of your uh, marketing uh, activities below your marketing expense accounts. So comments and line items, we made our own table inside Dynamics. And then, of course, your core budget table, we're writing the account level budgets to. So for simple budget processes, that is, um, you know, we have a very low cost implementation and license for, we call it live ERP budgeting for that. Um, that's, that's a really good way to do it. And you can still use the web interface to budget and so on. If you have a full blown budget model, payroll, capex and revenue and all of these other types of details, then obviously there aren't tables in Dynamics to store all of that. So then you would use BI360's data warehouse that becomes your budget database. And then you can always export the finished budget back to Dynamics. But we do have that direct live budgeting option. Great, thank you, Niels. Um, all right, so someone's asking um, BI360 data warehouse cost slash capacity, where is it stored, how is it populated? Um, yeah, so the cost is um, typically, it's a little different between AX and uh, SLGP and NAV, but uh, it runs right around $9,000, $9 and if I remember right. Um, the data warehouse is typically wherever your, most of your data is. So if you, if you have an in-house IT department and you're running Dynamics in-house or it's in with the hosting provider. Uh, there's a bunch of them uh, where that's specialized on Dynamics. You would install the data warehouse and BI360 uh, wherever you have Dynamics. We also have a cloud option of BI360. It's actually a whole new version we're coming with in, um, um, on June 1st if you want the public cloud and we're using Microsoft Azure and so on. That's probably a whole other discussion. But uh, the data warehouse, you generally put wherever most of your data sources are. That's where you would store that. How big can it be? It, well, it's a Microsoft SQL Server database. So it can be um, more or less unlimited size, uh, whatever SQL Server can store. Obviously, the more data you have, the more powerful server you would have so that you get good performance on it. 
Great, thank you. Um, here's another question. How is a license, licensing designer and viewer separate? Is it per user license or per site for GP? Uh, so for uh, the, the licensing is the same for GP and the other ERP systems. Uh, the designer, which is the Excel add-in where you build reports, and as you saw today, you can also run the reports there. Uh, that has uh, its own price. And uh, the viewer, which we, we call the player, or we, I like to call it end user licenses, so those that are just going to run the reports and view them and drill down, uh, that has a, you know, it's a lower cost license. And they are priced per seat. So if you have, let's say, two people that are building reports, they would be designers, or I call them power users. And let's say you have 10 people that are going to just run the reports, they would be end users at the lower cost license. And I should say, if you have a very small company and you have no interest or benefit at all uh, by uh, using the web portal, you just want to sit in Excel and run reports, uh, we do have end user licenses in Excel too, where the user can sit and, and run reports there. These days, if it was five, six, seven years ago, I would say, great, just use Excel, but these days where uh, you know, mobility and access and transparency and so on are becoming more and more important um, items to consider, uh, I would say for the vast majority of companies, including ourselves here at Solver, um, the benefit of access from anywhere, anytime in just a browser, it, it, you will discover over time is huge. So that's where I would prefer to put the end users. Okay, let me see if any questions have come in. All right, so here's another one. We use a broad range of views or stored procedures, especially on the SL project files. Can those views be accessed in the left-hand box or group of defined tables and fields? That is a brilliant question, and um, yet another item that I didn't mention in the in the demonstration. The answer is yes. So any type of um, two couple of things there. Um, SQL views that you have created yourself. Um, many people have created those for use in SQL reporting services or other reporting tools. Uh, absolutely can be used. So we have an interface in BI360, we call it the admin tool or interface, where you set up security and manage licenses, and you actually also manage the integration. So that left side you saw when I was in Excel, where I was dragging in accounts and so on, uh, you would also see any fields that comes from SQL views. You just have to, when you install BI360, go and uh, click on those views from our own interface where it looks down at your SL database. You will see all the SQL views you put there, and then um, they will show up uh, in Excel with whatever names you gave the views on the, you know, on the fields or columns. So absolutely, you can use views. You can even get as fancy as having linked server views, which is a little bit special, where you, if you had the database sitting next to Dynamics that you had so a couple of important tables of data in, you can stick a SQL view in, in your case there in Dynamics SL, pointing to those tables in that database next to SL, whatever system or homegrown database that is, and uh, that Again, because it's a SQL view sitting in your Dynamics database, will show up in the report writer. And then technically you're doing real-time reporting on two systems, both SL and the other database. So it's a little bit more rare, but, but also possible. Uh, we have another question about stored procedures. Um, someone's asking how they can pass parameters. Yeah, so anything that, any field, slash dimension that uh, you saw on the left side of Excel, so accounts, departments, amount, fields, and so on. Um, and the same goes for fields coming through a SQL view. Any of those uh, except measures, of course, an amount can't be a prompt, a filter, but any, any dimension or any attributes, attribute could be such as account category, it might be a field on the you know, account dimension. So any attribute or any dimension uh, can be used as a filter. Today you saw I made a filter for period and company, but that could have been a filter on account category or uh, department description or any of those type of fields can be filters. Great, thank you. Uh, let me see if we have any other 
question. Someone's asking how to switch. How, how can you switch to a different company, or how do you restrict, or how to restrict to certain companies uh, per specific user? Right. So I think that's a user. Yeah, that, that's a user security question, I believe. So um, I didn't show the administrative part of BI360 where you manage, like I said, the, you know, changing or adding things to the integration or users, but there's full user security setup. Um, it's very modern. It's Active Directory, single sign-on, so you don't have to recreate users that's already in your Active Directory, but you can apply security for BI360 based on any dimension in the system or actually even attributes. So the typical one would be company, uh, not one would be, you know, the, let's say you're on the SL or GP, so you have the account string, could be the department segment in your account string can actually by itself be a security setup. So uh, you can limit pretty much anything you want in the system based on the security setup. Someone's asking, how easy and flexible is it to build trees? Um, great question. And again, I didn't show the data warehouse interface today where you can manage and bring together many data sources. Uh, it's actually my favorite part of BI360. As much as I love the Excel design and the web portal, the fact that myself as a business user, not the technology guy, can actually configure the whole warehouse by just using menus and setting up modules, attributes, and trees. Uh, it's actually really cool. I don't need the data warehouse architect whatsoever. It's just a menu-driven setup. And in the data warehouse, you have the trees is one of the menus there, and it's a drag and drop thing. It's not coding, you just drag and drop companies from the company list into a hierarchy and save it, and now that becomes what you saw in my report design, uh, a hierarchy of companies. Someone's asking, is there a migration tool to take you from um, MR or FRX directly to BI360? Yes and no. So we had, uh, we've done a lot of um, conversions from both tools. Um, we built an FRX conversion tool two years ago. Um, that literally looks down at that repository database where FRX stores all of its report definitions, um, and it actually works. But the downside we found with it, uh, watching a lot of customers use it, is that, of course, it takes FRX the way it is, which is hard-coded row and column tables, right? Do you remember I built the trial balance, and with two rows, it became 78 rows when it expanded? Well, if I took that from FRX, it would be a 78 row row table, and using the conversion tool we built, it creates, of course, a 78-row hard-coded uh, report as compared to I could have made it with two rows, or if it was a P&L, maybe with 20 rows instead of 80 rows in FRX. So it sort of doesn't create best practices. We have the FRX conversion tool, but really the extra hours it takes to build it from scratch um, or at least just bring over, export to Excel and start with the headers and just drag in account is really worth it because you get a much more dynamic report that's easier to maintain. So there is a conversion tool. Um, you know, you could use it if you want to uh, for FRX. We've never built a conversion tool for management reporter for the reasons I just mentioned. Is we rather people get a really dynamic report and we don't want to send them into sort of having, uh, dragging with them the ghost of the past just to save some hours in implementation. Someone's asking if they can use the Excel slicers in the report while designing. Um, let me see, see, Excel slicers, I'm guessing they mean like the pivot table or let's say column filters, you know, the Excel features. So uh, uh, pivot tables, if that's what was meant with the question, you can absolutely use. I, I showed it on the drill down. It's already a feature in there. Or you can create a, a button, like a macro button, right on the report definition. So anyone running a report can, with a click, make it into a pivot table. Or you can make a report. That's really just a list in Excel with a filter if you just want to um, you know, have more of a filtered transaction list. So. You, you, you can use all features that are part of Excel in the report definition so that you don't have to repeat it every time you execute the report. Uh, someone's asking if you can 
create cash, for, cash forecasting taking data from AR and AP? Absolutely. So that gets into more fancy um, uh, forecasting. Um, and again, today I didn't want to spend time on it because it wasn't the topic of our presentation. But it's a whole, you know, that's part of the budgeting module in BI360. Because we're designing, well, because of the data warehouse where we can mix GL, AR, AP, and other things, uh, the report writer, which is also the form designer, if you keep in mind that. So when you build a cash flow form for cash flow forecasting, uh, as long as we're doing that, on the data warehouse um, where we have access to all of this, um, AR, AP, GL together, um, you can make a form that's looking at all of it in different ways and uh, it becomes an automated or at least a dynamic fancy cash flow forecast. We also have top-down forecasting where you can say, I want my net profit to be 300,000 and is looking at history and generating automatically the P&L um, and you can do the same with the, for, with the cash flow forecast, setting targets, and using basically fancy formulas in Excel, but with BI360, that, um, that makes it dynamic. It, I would say contact us, and we can do a presentation showing you various types of cash flow forecasts and, and other fancy areas of, of modeling. Thank you. Um, someone's asking the question, is the data pulled in real time directly from the ERP database, or is there an ETL process that periodically loads data into a reporting warehouse? Um, yeah, so I mentioned that a couple of times that maybe weren't clear enough in the presentation, so I'm, I just changed my screen here. So, so it's your choice. So, so I think everyone on the call today are probably on Dynamics, GP, SL, NAB, maybe AX. Um, so all of those dynamic systems, we have live reporting, just like FRX and management report, this dotted line you see goes from the report writer and straight into Dynamics. That means it's real time. You add the journal entry, a transaction in Dynamics, you run the report, it's there. Uh, the option with the data warehouse, that's a few things. It's great when you have advanced consolidations. It's great when you want faster speed because it doesn't slow down your Dynamics database when your people run reports. And it's great when you want to combine many different data sources. And of course, it's great for advanced modeling and budgeting. So it's your choice based on the type of data and reports you want. But absolutely, it, it, you can build live reports on Dynamics. Probably most of our customers have a good number of reports. And many people do both. They use both the warehouse, but they also have accountants having live reporting. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's any more questions. Um, someone's asking, is there a means to jump straight to a report on the web portal from within GP? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say um, I don't know. I don't know 100%. But any tool where you can embed a URL, because the web portal is a you know it's a web URL to get to it. And I'm not sure. I think somewhere in GP you can put in links to websites. So imagine you know Yahoo.com. If you want to open Yahoo from within GP, well, if you can do that, you can open our web portal from within GP. Okay. Let's see if any other questions come in. Uh, once again, if you have a question, please type it into the Q&A box on the right-hand side, and Nils will get to it. We have a lot of good questions, um, so that, that's great. Uh, let's see if anybody has any more. We'll give people a few more seconds to kind of collect their thoughts. Well, and while we're waiting for that, um, last word from me would be, um, that we'd be more than happy to give you personal presentations. Most people like that, of course, so you can ask more questions about your specific situation. So I put the contact email up there on the screen, info at solverglobal.com, or if your partner is a BI260 partner, of course, you could uh, ask them to. But this is how you contact us, and uh, then we can take care of anything you want to see or ask. Great, thank you. Um, looks like we don't have any more questions coming in, so why don't we end there. Uh, Nils, once again, I'd like to thank you so much for uh, presenting today. That was an, an awesome session. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody for attending and 
uh, for those of you that ask questions. Um, you ask great questions as well. Um, we recorded this session, so we'll be sure to email out a link uh, to everybody that um, registered and attended. Thanks again, and have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Adam. We really appreciate yep. you hosting this. Oh, our pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank you.